especially city people probably use these uh, kerosene type heaters. Uh, you can see around the top of here on mine, it's pretty black. I uh, let my mother-in-law borrow this when her power went out. Not sure what happened, but the wick is no longer functioning, so I went ahead and got a new wick for it at the hardware store. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it. These need to be replaced periodically every probably a couple of years, three, four years maybe. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start taking this thing apart. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pop the guard off the top here. It just kind of releases. You just need to lift it up, push it in, and let it out. There's four of those. And that comes off. And the next thing you gotta do is turn this handle. You gotta turn the handle just the right way. And it pops out. That's out. And then this, this piece just sets in there. And this is gonna have to be cleaned up drastically. It's just black. Then you can reach down in here. Pull right out, set it aside. So the next thing we need to do is take the four screws out around the base. Once you get the four screws out, you can just lift this up off, set it aside. The next thing we're going to have to do is take the knob off. We're going to want to pull this off front, and this is hooked onto the cap. We're pretty empty. So we'll just take the cap off. Okay, next we have there's four wing nuts here. Once we get these four off, the whole assembly will lift off of where the uh, kerosene tank is. And then our wick will be down in there. Okay, these are all pretty easy to get to. Three of them are, but this fourth one is right behind that assembly there for the wick height control. So it's a little tricky to get to, but you should be able to. What I did is just got a screwdriver in on all of them so far because the wing nuts are pretty tight. And then I just give them a tap. Give it a quick tap and then I'll usually get the wing nut started where you, and then you can get it by hand after that. Okay, you can see in my case, let me lower this back down. This should be up higher. The whole top of the wick is burned off. So it's a wonder my mother-in-law didn't burn the house down or something. I'm not sure what she did or how it happened. But this is now loose. I got all the wing nuts off. But before you pull this up, you're going to need to have something. You're going to have a wick that's soaked in kerosene, which you don't want to get that um, kerosene smell and kerosene all over everything. So you're going to need to have a plastic bag or something you can do with the uh, wick. So I'm going to get a garbage can right in here next to it right now. Okay, so now I'm just going to lift this up and pull the wick out. I don't know if you can see the kerosene dripping, but it's dripping back down in. We're going to let some of it drip. And then we're going to get it over the garbage can here and get rid of this. Side. I'll show you when I get it out. Okay, there's little spikes sticking out on the side. Looks like there's three rows of them. And that's what holds the wick in. You can see all the different lines. So I just looked up my model number. 
my brand and model number and it said to use the black line that is E. You can see it right, right there. So that's how we got to set it. We're going to put that right up next to the edge and that should put us at the right height. So that's what I got to do next. Okay, so what I did was I just folded this kind of U-shaped and put it right up to my line here, the E line, right on the edge, and pushed it on. And then I just pushed down until some of these bit in. And once you do that, you need to open it up. You need to just open it up a little bit. Make sure your line's still lining up. And then go through and push it onto the pegs. And then just keep Working all the way around, you can kind of feel them, kind of feel them going on. You can hear them snapping, and they go. Just keep working it all the way around until it's on there. Now we just have to fit it back down over, like so, over the middle piece here, wiggle it around on there, and just keep working down. And then line it back up with the studs, and let it slip right down in. And now it's on. The next thing we need to do is put our wing nuts back on. Oh, when you have it off, I looked at it too, I forgot to mention it. Make sure that you um, take, there's a gasket around the tank. Make sure that gasket is intact in there and clean. You don't want to have a bunch of kerosene leaking out. And then don't, you don't want to torque these wing nuts down. There's no need to torque them down yet. Just gonna snug these wing nuts up. You might be wondering what this goofy little wobbly thing is here. I'll go ahead and show you what that does in just a second. Seems kind of odd. The next thing we're going to do is put on the uh, handle. Oh, and just so you know, you're going to get really dirty doing this. But I'm going to crank up the wick. And we're going to measure to see if we're about right for height. I think for mine it says, it's going to vary by model. Mine is the Carol Heat 2230, and it says it wants a wick height of 7 16 so it's a little higher. Some of them are 3 8 some are 7 16 So we're going to get a tape measure and check that. Okay. Got my tape measure. Yeah, we're real close to 7 16 so we'll call that. So here's what that floppy thing is for. It's a safety feature that will make drop the wick down 
so you don't start a fire if you tip it over. So I'm going to shake it. I'm just going to, I don't want to spill it, I got a little kerosene in here, so I'm just going to hit this just like it would if you were tipping it over. See the wick dropped right down, and that'll put the flame out. So that's a neat little safety feature. So now I want to torque these down evenly, the wing nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way around them, and, and I'm not going to just reef on them. I'm going to work them fairly evenly. This one is pretty hard to reach, so I'm going to go ahead and give it its final tap with the screwdriver. Okay, and I think that's good to go. So I'm going to pull the handle back off again. And there's that little part at. Right here. This needs to go on next. I think I'm going to go ahead next and get some paper towels and clean this thing off before I finish putting it back together. Okay, I just went ahead and put the top cover on. Just sets on there. And then the top cage back on. And now I think we're ready to light it. I'm going to go ahead and crank up the wick. And like I said, I don't have the, the auto start. Can't do that. See, the auto start lifts that up. And then there's an igniter in there. If you can't probably see it, but it's right there. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot here with the lighter and see if it lights up for us. Starting to go. Probably going to be a little smoky for this first lighting. Hopefully it'll stop the flicker and then get a good nice even flame here shortly. But there you go. This probably hasn't been lit in probably two or three years. And I just went ahead and replaced the wick and now we're back in business.